Hello everyone, I am Gérald Fenoy from uh, Geolabs Company, a very small SME created back in uh, 2006 and I am glad to be accepted by the conference committee to be able to present the Zoo project and show you how we moved from the OGC API, uh, uh, OGC WPS, sorry, Web Processing Services, to OGC API Processes Part 1 Core and also the Part 2 Draft Specification which is about deploy, replace and undeploy. So the Zoo project is uh, an open source platform uh, implemented in C and C++ mainly. It's released under MIT X11 license and it implements WPS standard one, version one, version two, OGC API processes part one core standard, OGC API processes part two deploy, replace and undeploy draft specification which is ongoing and also part of the OGC API processes part three workflow draft specification especially the conformance class named Remote Processes, which lets you build complex query involving multiple processes that can be on your, running on your own server or on a remote server. So the initial idea was to use all the open source software libraries in a friendly way, in an easy way, in a standard way. So this is why we invented the Zoo project back in 2008 during the first 4G in uh, Cape Town. The ID came there and then uh, since Sydney we are trying to present every year at the international first 4G when it was uh, happening, not during the COVID period obviously, and we try to make a release for every new first 4G. Also, in, back in February last year, the project became an OGC reference implementation for both WPS2 and OGC API processes part one core. And also, the project graduated last year as an OSGO project, so we are willing to thank our mentors, Franco Merdam, which was the initial one, Dimitri Kotsinos, which take the lead afterward, and finally, Dimit, uh, Tom Kralidis, sorry, which uh, made us realize our dream to become an OGC, an OSGO, sorry, project. So finally, in March 2024, the project 2.0 has been released, and I will show you uh, some of its capabilities. So this is a PSC of the Zoo project. I would uh, like to thank Fabrice Brito from Terradue, Italy, which, I, which has joined. Uh, lately, the Zoo Project uh, PSC. These are few of the committers, but you can directly go on GitHub to review this. And this is an overview of the Open WPS platform, as we named it, because we started, as I told you, with WPS. So we have the Zoo Kernel, which is a WPS server, which is responsible to uh, interact with your service and execute, and the, with the client, obviously, and execute your services. We have the Zoo API, which is a JavaScript API, which is running on the server side, and which gives you the opportunity to create a chain of processes, including logic inside the chain. And then we have the WPS client, which is a bit obsolete nowadays, because we are not using WPS anymore, at least. We are using OGC API processes in many places. So obviously, it is working on every single platform. Uh, actually, we are supporting part one and part two since version 1.9. What is interesting with uh, Zoo Kernel, which is the engine uh, which is taking the responsibility to handle your service execution, is that it can uh, uh, interact with any, almost any programming languages from C, C++, Fortran, Java, PHP, Perl, Ruby, Python, C Sharp, and JavaScript, and R. At this step, when we uh, arrived to interact with all these programming languages, we were thinking it was a great achievement, but yet uh, we needed to maintain the source code of these uh, services, so it was still some work. So finally, we decided to integrate with uh, existing processing uh, applications, which are providing catalogs, such as uh, Orfeo Toolbox and Saga GIS, making all their applications or remote module for our Fair toolbox available as WPS or OGC API processes without writing, without the need to write one line of code. So also since the beginning, we integrated with Map Server, the C library, for being able, uh, in case your service is outputting any GIS related uh, things, then you will be able to automatically get them published as WMS, WFS, or WCS. 
So this is an example I talked about uh, since long time. Also since uh, WPS1, we have the get status service, which has been uh, renamed as a request in WPS2, uh, which is named get status and which is uh, the same, which is uh, available in OGC API processes, part one core. Also in, uh, back in 2017, we were involved in the GeoSuite project led by IRD, in Fran uh, French Research Laboratory, where the zoo project was used to execute a remote task. Actually, it was only Orpheo Toolbox uh, applications remotely on an HPC server. Uh, then we have implemented the OGC API processes part one core. So in the OGC API, every OGC API, as uh, Johanna was mentioning earlier, you have a landing page. And you have also the capability to request the content as, uh, as JSON or as HTML. So we took this as an advantage to implement something that we are doing also in MapMint for years now, since 2010, which is uh, reusing a Cheetah templating system to provide HTML pages based on the JSON provided by the OGC API processes server. As Joanna said, we, are a we became a reference implementation last year for both WPS2 and uh, OGC API processes part one core. Uh, we have integrated a work which has been done late uh, in uh, 2015, but it was integrated only a few years back. I cannot recall exactly the date. Where we are uh, now having two different kind of zoo kernel. We have the main zoo kernel, which is uh, taking the request, let's say the front zoo kernel, and then we have the zoo kernel fast process manager, which is responsible to grab messages, so asynchronous request uh, execution, to and, uh, to interpret them and handle them uh, directly on a, potentially on another machine. During the testbed 19 HPGC activity, the Zoo project has been uh, modified to actually reuse the part two draft specification and being able to automatically deploy Singularity container on uh, HPC and then execute them using the OGC API processes part one core. Also back in 2022, during uh, an OSG, OSGO OGC ASF uh, Apache Software Foundation code sprint, in which we participated, we integrated with Map Server 8, meaning that rather than only supporting WMS, WFS, and WCS, we are now also providing uh, automatic output of OGC API features, at least at the level supported by Map Server. We are willing to thank Microsoft and Google, so Microsoft Azure for open source, which is a project where you can apply to have a grant to be able to use the Azure platform almost for free, meaning that you, they will give you a given amount of money and you can use it for your own purposes. We were using it actually to deploy Zoo Project DRU, which I will speak about later, to deploy it on Azure. And also since 2015, with Raja Chinde, we started uh, to put the project uh, in a Google Summer of Code and propose projects to students that are paid by Google to participate in the community. And since then, every year we have a new student which can participate either in Zoo Project or MapMint. Also, the Zoo Project is now included in the EOEPCA project, Earth Observation Exploitation Platform Common Architecture, and it is used there as a processing engine, obviously, which is able to deploy, to deploy uh, CWL files, so common workflow language, where you can embed uh, both your do the Docker image you are willing to run on, your potentially your source code even, or uh, the application you want to call. You can deploy this as an OGC API processes part one core standard, and then interact with it. So we are uh, relying on a best practice for Earth Observation Exploitation Package, which defines that stack should be used for both input and output. This is what you can see on the slide, this stack stage in and stage out step, which is, invol which is uh, involved in every execution. So actually, this is an overview of uh, what is CWL, meaning that you can have uh, your application implemented in any programming language. Then you will publish a Docker image that you will reference from your CWL file. You deploy this CWL file on the Zoo project, and you will get a standard OGC API processes that you can uh, interact with. 
This is the most important part of this uh, support for the, the deploy, replace, and undeploy. It is a Zook Alrician runner, which makes your task able to run directly on a Kubernetes cluster. And obviously, if the task can be run uh, in concurrency or in parallel, then you, can, uh, you will have a pod that will pop automatically to handle the current step. Also, during the testbed 19 uh, Geodata Cube activity, the zoo pro, in, the zoo pro, in the zoo kernel, we integrated the filter in and filter out capability, which means that traditionally the zoo kernel is handling uh, the request uh, as it comes. But nowadays, before, handling the, before the handling of the request, you can implement a filter in, which can do almost uh, whatever you want. And also, you can have a filter out. You can have actually as many services invocation in both filter in and filter out. So you can have add more, co more capability to the current implementation without having to implement much things, but simply relying on existing other uh, capabilities from other software. So st uh, we started this uh, filter in and filter out by uh, showing that we were able to deploy open EOGRAPH as first citizen in OGC API processes part one core using the part two draft specification. Also, we integrated the Zoo project with EO API simply by using a filter in or filter out to add capabilities. And this way we can have the data nearby the processing or uh, reverse sense. Also during the test 19 uh, machine learning transfer activity, the Zoo project was used to, with, uh, in combination with the NVIDIA, Triton, inference server, and the Neutron viewer. <laughs> you are relying on the open neural network ONNX format to store your model. So we are providing some kind of uh, model catalog where you can list the model, access one model description. When you, can have, when you have this model description, it comes in JSON. But if you want to visual, visualize it, you can use the Neutron interface transparently. It comes in a single open API. And then you have inference as a service too. But uh, at that time, we did not uh, investigate if we were able to do that with CWL. So since then, we are involved in a climate and disaster resilience pilot uh, first phase 2024, in which we are finally, uh, we have demonstrated that it is we are able to implement the inference directly within CWL language. Also, the project is involved in the OGC Open Science Persistent Demonstrator. When we are willing to share algorithms amongst, uh, amongst organizations and make them fair, uh, actually, uh, here you can see the Galaxy project in action where you can build workflow. There is a 52 North company which is responsible to create a, uh, an OGC API processes client which is able to interact with any OGC API processes server instance. And in this case, you can see a workflow where we are uh, interacting with some uh, processes coming from CRIM, from Canada, and some other processes coming from Geolabs. Uh, about the ongoing development and uh, the goal we are willing to achieve uh, before the end of this year, we are willing to get the OGC API processes part two, which I think it's in, it's in a very good shape, to be released and validated by the OAB. Then we are willing to investigate the proposed extension to OGC API processes, which is a part three workflow, which is to me containing uh, too, much, too many things at, the, at this step. Maybe we have to investigate or split it in a multiple part. We are also willing to integrate the support for uh, CWL Prov to conserve provenance and store the workflow run as a research object using linked data. And we are also willing to evaluate cloud optimized uh, format when they are using for processing data on HPC. So then we have the Zoo services. You remember I was telling you that we have the Zoo kernel, Zoo service, Zoo API, and Zoo client. So the Zoo services is basically a growing suite of services where you have uh, the source code and the metadata information which are separated. I don't think it is the same in every implementation and the metadata can be also stored inside a PostgreSQL database. So here you have a very simple example of an hello world. And we, as Einstein said, we try to keep things simple, stupid, kiss. 
Uh, these are the uh, engine I, we were supporting, so we have more than 700 uh, OGC API processes or WPS services, because actually when you are moving from WPS, at least using the Zoo project, if you are moving from WPS to OGC API processes, you don't have to modify one line of code in your uh, service source code. So this is the Zoo API, which is uh, commonly used even nowadays, even when we are relying and interacting with as uh, OGC API processes, even if it's only supporting WPS1 behind the scene. With this, we have uh, built up uh, MapMint version 1 long time ago, back in 2010, and we were using, obviously, the uh, amazing GEDAL tool to produce uh, relevant information for our clients. Then we have the Zoo client, which is, uh, this time, a JavaScript library, but which uh, makes your client application, so your browser, able to communicate with the WPS server. Thanks to this, we have made the example available on the Zoo Project website for Saga GIS, or for Toolbox. Uh, then we have made uh, MapMin2 client, which is uh, currently still in cell. So we have moved to GitHub. We are currently, for every push you make, we are building the OGC ETS, uh, and we are uh, running it through the new code, just to ensure that we are still conformant with, uh, with the standard. Uh, you can find the project on Docker Hub as any open source software. So you can build and deploy a Zoo project easily on your own platform. You can also deploy the Zoo project DRU, which is the one involved in an EOEPK project, to deploy it on your Kubernetes cluster. So you can go on Artifact Hub and download the M chart and follow the documentation on how to use it. And uh, last but not least, we have built up on top of this Zoo project uh, an SDI, which is named MapMint, which is a, a user interface for Map Server. So ATA, if there is any question, I will be, I will be, I hope I will be able to answer them. Thank you very much, Gerard. So, who wants to ask the first question? Hmm. Uh, thanks, Gerard. Uh, I would like to know, uh, because in both part three of OGC API processes and also in the Geodata Cube API, there's mentioned uh, OpenEO. I'd like to know what's the relationship with OpenEO. Is there any interaction planned or, yeah? Actually, I'm not sure. There is, uh, we are trying at the OGC to find a link between OpenEO and OGC API processes. This is why actually I was uh, demonstrating this uh, publication of an OpenEO graph and using it afterward as an OGC API processes part one core. But uh, as Matthias would have said, I think uh, OpenEO is already coming with a lot of tooling around it. So maybe we should do the reverse, meaning that we probably should adapt the OGC API processes to be more compliant with OpenEO rather than the making OpenEO integrated within OGC API processes. Thanks. Thank you, Fabian. Uh, 